Welcome to the University of Louisville 2020 Commencement Celebration. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure to introduce you to President Neely Bendapudi. Welcome to the University of Louisville's 2020 Winter Commencement. I know this is not the commencement we imagined, but even if the form is different, the spirit the spirit is the same. We are here to celebrate. First of all, we celebrate the families and friends who stood with you and who stood by you, our students, to make sure that you fulfilled the promise you made to them and to yourself when you first stepped foot on campus as a freshman. So families and friends, we thank you and we celebrate you. Next, we celebrate our faculty and staff who did not let a global pandemic get in the way of you receiving a world-class education from a world-class university. They moved to remote and hybrid classes, mastered and taught in new modalities, and through it all, they put you, our students, first. So faculty and staff, we thank you and we celebrate you. Of course, commencement would not have happened without the support you received from your families and friends, your faculty and staff. But truly, today we're all just supporting actors. The stars of the event are you, proud graduates of 2020. You did it, you persevered, you showed that you are a true cardinal, brave, resilient, determined. You have made such an impact on our campus and I know you'll continue to do so wherever you go, whatever you do, through discovery and innovation, through service with a purpose, through your commitment to build a better world. And to honor you and all 2020 graduates, we've designated an area on campus as the 2020 Quad. We will never forget 2020, and I suspect neither will you. I do hope you will remember these important lessons. The year was tough, but we are tougher. We are tougher because we acted as one cardinal family. Our enrollment reached more than 23,000 students, the highest in 20 years, and our research funding, it soared to an all-time high. To some people, it may have seemed like the world stopped in 2020, but that did not happen here at the University of Louisville. It doesn't mean our students and faculty and staff were not hurting or grieving or struggling, not at all, but it means that you, our students, looked within and saw that you were strong enough to be busy innovating, creating, learning, researching, and above all, helping others. You invented new products, launch new companies and establish nonprofit organizations. You tracked COVID-19 cases. You won prestigious scholarships. And of course, you graduated from college. This year, more than 5,000 cardinals finished their degrees. 12 scholars earned prestigious Fulbright scholarships. Hundreds danced for 18 hours in the Race Red Dance Marathon to generate a record-setting $690,000 in the fight against pediatric cancer. Students, you took a leading role in the design of a new residence hall and our cultural and equity center, which opens next year. And students in the National Panhellenic Council, a group of nine traditionally black fraternities and sororities work to bring historical markers to the Belknap campus to celebrate the history of the council. And yet another group of students launched a peer-reviewed journal to showcase and share undergraduate research. And our women's basketball team was selected to represent the United States at the 2021 World University Games in China. And students, in every arena, you stepped up to push us in our vision of anti-racism. And of course, so many of you stepped up 
to address the other problem of our times, the COVID-19 pandemic. You helped by designing and producing 3D face shields for healthcare workers. You helped by working with healthcare officials to trace the path of the virus in our community. And you helped by answering a call to duty to serve in the Kentucky National Guard. You helped by delivering meals to senior citizens. So 2020 was not a year of simply watching and waiting. It was a year of Cardinals doing what they do best, stepping up to help others. Now commencement is a very special day, so much for you to celebrate. It is candidly the brightest day in the academic year, and you are our shining stars. So please share your graduation with us. We'd love to you, for you to use the hashtag UFLGrads2020 to show us how you're celebrating today. Along with our entire university, I am so proud and grateful that you chose to be a Cardinal. And remember, as alumni, you are now forever Cardinals. This campus will always be your home, your nest to come back to. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you here and beyond. And now, let me turn this over to our esteemed provost, Dr. Beth Bame. Congratulations and go cards. Thank you, President Bendapudi. Welcome to all who are watching and celebrating today. This year, we have faced unprecedented challenges, but our campus community stepped up. We did not dwell on problems. We focused on solutions, using our cardinal principles, such as agility, to guide us toward a thriving future. And now here we are, celebrating the graduation of more than 5,000 students. I have never been so proud to be part of this institution. Most college graduates have a support network, family, guardians, friends, neighbors, classmates, community. Students, don't forget to take, thank those who gave you love and support during your academic journey. We also want to recognize our first generation college graduates. Your degree means greater success for you today and greater success for future generations tomorrow. If you are a military veteran, thank you for your service and incredible commitment. At this time, I want to recognize our 2020 ROTC spring and winter graduates. These graduates will be or have already been commissioned into military service. During commencement, we traditionally ask faculty members to stand and be recognized. Of course, we can't do that today. So I want to ask our students for a favor. Send a note, a text, an email, or a social media post to thank a faculty member who helped you earn your diploma. It will mean the world to them. Now I want to introduce Daisha Price. Daisha was selected as our May 2020 student speaker for her outstanding academic record in service. She earned a bachelor's degree in nursing from the School of Nursing and graduated magna cum laude. Daisha was a member of the Black Student Nurses Association, served as vice president of the Nursing Student Council. During her time at UofL, Daisha took part in two service learning trips. She traveled to Belize and Puerto Rico, where she worked to help people gain access to health care. She also worked to educate communities so they could better understand how to lead happier and healthier lives. She is a strong leader and a committed nurse. We are proud of Daisha and happy to call her a Cardinal. Hello and welcome to the 2020 virtual commencement ceremony. My name is Deja Price and I'm extremely honored to address all of you today. Um, I could safely assume that this ceremony and this year in general um, do not look exactly how we imagine that they would, but that does not take away from the magnitude of achievement and um, accomplishment that we are here to recognize and celebrate today. All of your hard work, perseverance, long nights, and tears have finally paid off. Each and every student recognized here today should be overwhelmingly proud of the magnitude of achievement um, and this momentous accomplishment. 
I want to give thanks to all of those who made it possible for us to be here today. So thank you to every mom, dad, and grandparent. Thank you to every aunt, uncle, cousin, and sibling, everyone in between. Uh, thank you for the kind words, encouragement, and support. We would not be here without you. Um, thank you for the shoulders to cry on, probably a little more than you expected. Uh, thank you for the long talks, even if those were from a distance. And thank you for the tough love whenever we wanted to give up. It made all the difference. Um, also, thank you to every professor, every clinical instructor, preceptor, um, internship coordinator, advisor, research assistants, lab assistants, the list goes on and on. We recognize your hard work, long hours, reassurance, and your passion did not go unnoticed. Uh, we have taken these traits upon ourselves and we will carry your lessons with us forever. You are shaping the future and we will not let you down. Uh, and last but not least, I want to say thank you to all of my classmates. Um, it was hard, it was testing, um, doing school during the middle of a pandemic is hard, but um, I know that without a doubt, I would not be here without each of you. Um, while we may be headed in a thousand different locations or directions, whether that is in Kentucky, out of Kentucky, out of the country, um, into a home, a classroom, or a hospital, uh, maybe into the military or somewhere else entirely, we are connected. Uh, we beat this crazy thing called college together, and we will never forget this race or this finish line. Uh, we started this journey years ago feeling like we would never finish it and crazy enough we were right because we are lifelong learners we are innovators we refuse to do things just because that is the way that it has always been done and we are pioneers we have much to learn but that will always be the case someone recognized here today may be on your ballot in a future election Someone here today may cry as your child, their student, leaves their classroom for the last time. Someone here today may save your life or the life of your loved one. And someone here today may star in your soon-to-be favorite TV show. Maya Angelou once said, people may forget what you said, people may forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So regardless of what you are headed out into the world to do, do it with a smile. Even whenever you're having a rough day or you have a difficult client, customer, or patient, uh, encourage the person that it seems like everyone else has given up on, even if that person is yourself. Remember why you chose to be a veterinarian, dentist, doctor, nurse, teacher, chemist, engineer, lawyer, businessman or woman, the list goes on and on, but just make sure that you never lose your passion. While they may only be our client, customer, or patient for a little while, our actions, words, and gestures leave lasting impressions. I invite you to reflect and learn about yourself, identify your biases, and to quote Dr. Rudy Clark and Dr. Imelda Wright, put them in a backpack and leave them at the door. So I leave you with a plea. Please take care of yourselves. We pour out so much of ourselves into our work, and it is imperative that we make it a priority to refill and recharge. So I ask three things of each of you. Never stop learning, never stop growing, and most of all, never stop caring. It may seem like this is the end, but it is only the beginning. Our work has already begun. I applaud you and I congratulate you. University of Louisville, class of 2020, we did it. Now go out there and show them what we're made of. Go Cards. Thank you, Daisha. Now I'm honored to introduce the student speaker for the winter 2020 commencement. John Craycroft is a biostatistics doctoral student in the School of Public Health and Information Sciences, chosen to receive a prestigious university fellowship after earning his master's degree in biostatistics. John has already published three articles in some of the most prestigious journals in his discipline. What's more, John eagerly helps other researchers. 
He has taken part in a number of research conferences, including being a presenter at some of those conferences. Apart from his academic record, he is service-minded and quick to volunteer. He was instrumental in forming the University of Louisville student chapter of the American Statistical Association, a big undertaking for anyone, and especially for a busy graduate student. John is a first-class scientist, community leader, and student. His work raises the esteem of our institution. It is my pleasure to introduce such an accomplished young professional, John Craycroft. Greetings, fellow Cardinals. Hey, we made it. We have each now completed a noteworthy stage of a noteworthy journey. In this interlude between stages of a longer journey, it's a good moment to reflect on what it's taken to get us here. I guarantee that no two of us have had the exact same set of experiences, the exact same array of challenges to meet, the exact same causes for feelings of excitement or stress or accomplishment or frustration or inspiration. Don't get me wrong. Indeed, we do have a large set of shared experiences, passionate debates with friends and classmates, late night cram sessions, spring break adventures, sports events of all kinds, parties, meals with friends, workout sessions, juggling jobs and academics, and don't forget seeking out those best Wi-Fi hotspots, preferably with a reliable supply of caffeine close by. These shared and common experiences will hopefully be a treasured part of our memories for many years to come. And they will also help bind us to that larger U of L Cardinal community of which our graduating class is just one part. But still, when we narrow our scope of reflection from the many ways we spent our time here at U of L to those times when we learned the most or grew the most, when were those times? Were they during repetitions of the same experiences or were they from new experiences? Did we learn the most from our friends and professors who had backgrounds the most similar to our own? If you think about it, anyone embarking on the college or graduate school experience must have inside some willingness to try new things, some ambition to learn new knowledge, some tacit recognition that they do not yet know all they need to know to do all that they want in life. This internal attitude of exploring, of adventure, of constant learning, it must be celebrated and cherished. My rhetorical question is, when does that frame of mind change? Does it change now at graduation? Do we believe that we now know all we need to? Does it change after working in some new job for five years or ten years? that we need no longer value others' experiences? Does it change after visiting five other countries, or 10, or maybe 20, that we start to assume we've now encountered all important perspectives, and we can close our minds to all except those that sit most easily within us? What if that zest for new experiences, that craving for fresh knowledge, that humble recognition that there will always be new, per, new and dis, different perspectives. What if these attitudes that all of us carried upon starting our graduate school or college careers stayed with us our whole lives? One thing I know is this. Having the degrees that we celebrate today, having these letters behind our names, no matter what letters those are, it does not represent the end of anything. Yes, it is a noteworthy accomplishment. Yes, it is something we can be proud of for our whole lives. But it does not say we now know all we need to about our particular fields. This should be both reassuring and motivating to us. There's still more learning to be done. There's still more work to do. There are still other people to hear. I believe if we stay open to learning from others and to always valuing new experiences, if we approach life's challenges with a willingness to work hard, with the confidence that we have something valuable to contribute, and with our ears, eyes, 
and hearts open to others, we can make important changes in the world. Changes big and small. Changes that can make our university, our friends and families, and our own selves proud. Congratulations to each one of us, and best of luck on the next stage of your journey, whatever that may be.